In this short video, we are going to be looking at Hofstede's six different cultural dimensions. So Geet Hofstede was a Dutch uh, social psychologist, a former employee of in IBM and professor of emeritus of organizational anthropology and international management at Maastricht University in the Netherlands well known for his research on cross-cultural groups and organizations. And in 2008, Hofstede was listed amongst the Wall Street Journal's top 20 most in influential management thinkers of that time. Hofstede carried out research at IBM where he worked in on over 100,000 employees worldwide. And it was within this period and this time where he developed and extended the categories to six base to his latest research. These six um, cultural dimensions included individualism versus collectivism, the power distance, masculinity versus femininity, uncertainty avoidance, long-term orientation, and indulgence versus restraint. And if we look at individualism versus collectivism, here what we're saying is, you know, some societies value the performance of individuals, whereas others really prefer the performance of teamwork. So it's either individuals or teamwork. And this has important implications for financial rewards at work, individual bonuses versus profit sharing for bigger groups. So individualism refers to the social mentality which focuses on the individual valuing and recognizing individual achievement and encouraging independent you know, thought and action. And you know, you ask yourself, do you prefer to, or do you see yourself as an individual coming up with creative, innovative ideas, or do you see yourself more productive as part of the team? And then we go on to Hofstede's power distance, PD. And this considers the extent to which inequality is tolerated and whether there is a strong sense of position and status, a high power distance score would indicate that the national culture that accepts and encourages bureaucracy and a high respect for authority and rank. A lower power distance score suggests a national culture that encourages a flat organizational structure and greater emphasis on personal responsibility and autonomy. So if we look at the United States, it has a power distance score, according to Hofstad, of 40 compared to a score of 80 for Ghana. So this basically means that the status and rank and distinctions matter less in the United States, but have a greater influence in Ghana in terms of their cultural and value system. If we look at Hofstadt's masculinity versus femininity, this category considers the differences in decision-making style. Hofstadt linked this to what he called masculine approach to a hard-edged, fact-based and aggressive style of decision-making. We're not talking about um, men versus women, but we're talking about uh, a male aggressive approach or a feminine uh, or less aggressive approach in terms of a, a femininity a, approach. So the feminine approach decision making involved a greater degree of consultation and intuitive analysis. So if we look at this, we can see that masculine cultures include, you know, Japan, Australia, Venezuela and the UK, whereas feminine type cultures include Sweden, Norway, Denmark, Portugal and Thailand. But don't get mixed up in terms of, you know, male versus female. It's not that. It's more of the um, type or way of business and uh, uh, an aggressive, uh, hard-edged, fact-based approach in terms of masculinity or femininity in terms of a softer approach. If we look at uncertainty avoidance, well, this category essentially considers a different attitudes to risk between countries. Hofstadt looked at the level of anxiety people feel when in uncertain or unknown situations. Low levels of uncertainty avoidance indicates a willingness to accept more risk, work outside the rules and embrace change. This might indicate a more entrepreneurial type national culture. 
higher levels of uncertainty avoidance would suggest a more of a support for the rules, data, clarity in roles and responsibilities. Now, these cultures might be less entrepreneurial as a consequence. So if we try and look at these and compare these to countries, well, Mexico, for example, has a uncertainty high level for uncertainty avoidance score 82 compared to 46 for the United States. Thus, Mex the Mexican culture is viewed as a more risk adverse, more inclined towards um, stability for the US type of culture. If we look at the long term orientation culture, well, this category is concerned with a different emphasis of national cultures have on the time horizons for business planning objectives and performance. Some countries place greater emphasis on short term performance, so called short termism with financial and other rewards biased towards a period of just a few months or years. Other countries take a more longer term perspective, which is likely to encourage more long term thinking. The key implication of this strategy is the impact of an investment decision and risk taking. Uh, we look at this for comparison. Canada, China and the US, Germany and Japan have long term orientation scores, you know, of 36, 87, 26, 83, uh, 88, um, respectively. So they think more in terms of the long term, in terms of making a profit. Then we have Hofstadt's indulgence versus resistance. The indulgence stands for a society that allows relatively free gratification of the basic and natural human drives related to enjoying life and having fun. Resistance stands for a society that suppresses gratifications of needs and regulates it by means of a strict social norms. So in essence, cultures have a high indulgence scores play a greater value on seeking happiness compared to cultures in that lean towards restraint. And when we look at the research, we can see that indulgence scores of 24 for China, 48 for France, 68 for the US, 72 for Ghana and 80 for Trinidad and Tobago. So we can see the uh, higher scores <laughs> more seeking the indulgence and the lower scores of the restraint. And here we can see um, Hofstad's cultural indicators and his table and the scores that he played and placed on different countries like Australia, China, the UK, India, South Korea, Singapore, and USA and the scores he gave them in terms of the power distance, individualism versus collectivism, masculinity versus femininity, uncertainty avoidance, long-term orientation and indulgence uh, versus restraint. So we can see here the scores that um, in this table that he's provided. So how can this model be used? Well, it's a multinational uh, a cultural approach trying to decide how best to reward management and employees in different countries a multinational you know wanting to optimize approaches to investment appraisal so these you know um, six dimensions power distance uncertainty avoidance individualism masculinity long-term orientation indulgence serve as a concise accessible and potentially powerful tools for gaining a better understanding of each other's values and beliefs and how they influence and shape corresponding communication and behaviors and ultimately how you can get the best out of your people by motivating them in the most effective way depending upon your organizational culture or national culture or the culture that they would prefer to be within and with that which will motivate them the most in order to achieve uh, the best profit and effectiveness and efficiencies for the organization.